ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Hey guys, k a k a r o t 197 again. This time with a review of the real great Exia Gundam from the 00 Gundam series, provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hobbling Japan. Links to buy your own war eliminating death machine down below. And in terms of looks, we're getting a very cool looking compromise between the sleek design of the Exia and the detail that the real great line is known for. Everything is looking nice and sharp, and it really shows on the head. This is the kind of stuff that the real great line was made for. Of course, it also goes without saying that it's virtually completely color accurate, with the only exceptions being the metallic green stickers underneath these translucent green domes and the eyes that have two types of stickers. The one that I used is the traditional all in one eye sticker. But you also have the option to use a black sticker first and then apply the eyes as separate stickers to kind of give it more of a three dimensional feel. As a trade off, it's much more of a hassle and it's also a pain to line up the eyes perfectly. The other ones I applied then were silver ones that went underneath the very cool looking hologram stickers and the metallic green ones for the main and back camera. Although it should be noted that there is clear green plastic underneath them, just as with the eyes. And then there are still a bunch more metallic and marking stickers to apply as you see fit. So, straight out of the box, we're getting a beautiful real grade. Drop a panel line here and there, and maybe even give this thing a top coat, and it'll look absolutely perfect. Just keep in mind that with its many small and fragile parts, some of which can also be a bit tricky to put together, this is not a kit that I would recommend for beginners or people looking for a quick, fun build. Under the hood, then, we get a pretty amazing, real great inner frame that is right in the middle of the transition between fully pre assembled, real great inner frames to the build it yourself, miniaturized, master great inner frames. Or, to put it simply, you have to build the knees yourself, making them a bit sturdier. The flexibility is also amazing, it's just a shame that putting the armor back on will hinder it somewhat. But before we have a look at that, we're going to have a look at the accessories. Or maybe I should say, have a look at all of the sorts that this thing comes with, because this is, after all, the Gundam 7 Swords. On the back of the shoulders, we get the two GN beam sabers, which will go up and down. And then on the hips, we get the two GN daggers, which will also go up and down, in addition to going outwards, just like they can in the anime. And while all four of them are completely functional and also removable, what you're gonna wanna use are these two instead, because they have a peg on them. Which will then go very well into either the fixed hands or the movable hands, both available in left and right, and equally functional when it comes to the beam savers or the beam daggers. And as you can see in the pictures, we of course also get two beam saber blade effect parts for the beam savers. And two beam saber blade effect parts for the beam daggers. What doesn't work quite as well are the GN long blade and the GN short blade. Now, first of all, they look amazing. That chrome on them is really nice. Now, there is a small nub mark to be found on it, but with a part like this, that is unfortunately inevitable. What I would have liked then is a better fit in the hands. Because as you can see, when it comes to the fixed hands, they're quite loose in there. And I cannot believe that I'm saying this, but at the moment, the movable hands are doing a better job at holding on to them. So maybe you should consider storing them on the hips. You carefully open them up. Carefully reveal the peg and then carefully place them on there. And even though this is the correct way of storing them, because the hilts are the same, you could change them around. Or if you buy a second real great Exia, 
you could equip one of them with two long blades and the other one with two short blades. And talking about things you could turn around, the GN sword. Now you can very simply put this on the other side as well and then the only thing that kinda prevents you from turning it around or making it not optimum when it's turned around is that the handle here does have a peg but you know that's very easily dealt with. So you could get an Exia with two of these GN swords if you buy two of them. And with how amazing this thing looks I could see someone equipping an Exia with two of these. Also one thing I haven't pointed out is that all of the swords are nice and pointy as well. So now let's actually hook it onto the Exia. This thing here goes onto the arm and can also move forwards and backwards to help you with posing it. And then this here is also on two hinges again to help you pose it. So now to actually hook it on there, you simply hook it up to the hand, click it in there and then click this in there. And then you can have it either as a rifle, you can have it as a sword or you can transform it into this mode. And honestly, especially with that chrome on it, no matter which mode you put it in, it's going to look amazing. And if you want your poses to look a little bit more dynamic, we also get to open palm hands. Then for defensive purposes, we get this really nicely detailed shield, which you can have either in closed mode or if you slide it out and then reassemble it, it can go into open mode. Although in open mode, the connection is a little bit less strong. Then turning it around, this thing here will go up and down along the track by disconnecting it and reconnecting it. And you simply hook it onto either arm by pushing it in there. And that's still not everything that we're getting. We're also getting a tiny Gundam figure, a connector for an action base, and two spare parts. We have this part of the GN drive assembly and then a second V-fin. Which, considering how fragile it is, is very much appreciated. And then to wrap things up, we also have a special feature, which is removing the GN drive. Now, normally, you would expect to be able to remove it by just opening up these retention arms. But with just that, you're not going to be able to pull it out. What the manual actually tells you to do is remove the entire backside which is easier to do than you think. There we go. Then you remove the retention arms and then you can simply pop it out. Also, in the comments of my unboxing video, I've seen some people comment that this part here is extremely loose on their figure. On mine though, it's really the last of my worries. So which parts are loose on your kit may vary. So now with all of those accessories out of the way, let's have a look at the articulation of this thing. The head is on a ball joint and hinge combo, so it goes nicely up, down, rotates around. And then these things you just have to be careful for, they do also go up and down. Then the shoulders are very nicely articulated because the body itself can go forwards and backwards a little bit, up and down so that really gives those arms some nice extra movement. Just got to be a bit careful with the shoulders because they do like to pop out once you push the arms too high. And then the shoulders will also go forwards and backwards by themselves. So again really nicely articulated. Of course they will also rotate around all the way, the arms will rotate around all the way below the shoulders, bent at the elbow on two joints, and then we get this nice wrist joint that goes up and down a little bit, and the hands are of course as always on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. Then the rest of the body is quite interestingly articulated. On the waist we don't get a ball joint but we get a normal hinge joint. So while it does go nicely forwards and backwards and also rotates around, it doesn't go side to side 
on the same joint. Instead, the sideways movement is up here like so. So again, that is a pretty interesting joint utilizing the features of the Exia. And now we get to the less good parts, something that I really wasn't expecting. The front skirts are molded separately and do go upwards quite nicely, but they might have as well been static because the legs only go forwards that far. And if I move this leg up, it comes with a special feature moving by itself. This leg was very loose straight out of the box because at this point I haven't posed it for pictures yet and frankly I haven't really posed it at all. And with the back skirts it's basically the same story. They go very nicely backwards but the legs themselves they're just not feeling it. And I feel that this is something that they could have easily solved, especially on a close combat mobile suit like the Exia. And if you've been following my reviews for a while, you might have noticed that I do like putting my figures into poses that take advantage of that kind of articulation. Fortunately, the outwards movement is significantly better, at least as long as you don't have the swords connected to it. Then the legs will also rotate around all the way, bend at the knee on two joints and do also have some really nice armor separation going on. Just look at all of the splits that it's got. Then for the feet we have this movable armor piece and this thing here also goes up and down. The feet themselves then will go nicely forwards and backwards on a hinge and ball joint combo. And if you look closely at that GN power line, you will see that it also moves along with that hinge. Then the feet will go side to side on the same ball joint but on a different hinge. And then they'll also rotate around all the way. And then there's still some more articulation here and even the little toe is articulated. And then of course the final thing that moves is the cockpit hatch, but as usual with the real grades, there's nobody home. So overall the articulation was almost really good. I always say that the importance of the articulation is dependent on the machine, so when it comes to a close combat unit like the Exia, it's disappointing to see that they couldn't work around this limitation. The loose leg on mine was also somewhat of an annoyance, but nothing that can be fixed with a bit of super glue. Unfortunately, super glue isn't going to fix that limited leg articulation. But anyways, as always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And I think this is one of the only times that I've been quite disappointed with the kit because I've often seen this thing referred to as being the best real grade out there or at least at the time being the best real grade but I'm also very pleased with it at the same time. There's no denying that it looks phenomenal and it does come with all of the stuff you need. So for 2500 yen this is a great deal for a great looking kit. It might not be perfect because of that limited hip movement, but I also wouldn't say that it's a deal breaker. Especially not if you're someone like me and most of your kits are displayed in a dynamic standing pose. But it is something to keep in mind. On to some size comparisons then. First up, next to an older real great, the Zaku 2, and the modern Force Impulse Gundam. Then here it is next to the high grade Exia and Kyrios and say what you will about how much better the real grade is compared to the high grade, the latter does have superior forward leg movement. Also I think the Kyrios would greatly benefit from a new 1144 scale rendition whether it's a high grade or a real grade. And then finally, here it is next to the standard size gym custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And guess what? Both of them have superior forward leg movement. 
Ouch. Anyways, that has been all for this review of this conflict ending death machine. And if you want your own, links down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day and I'll see you all next time.